Um, welcome everyone to Slither 56. Um, today we're going to be talking about what can Kerr do for you. So we'll be talking about the Council on Undergraduate Research and we have uh, Joe Rezek, we have Bridget Gorley and Carrie Stone who are all part of the chemistry division in Kerr and um, they will be telling us more about the, the overall organization and the chemistry division, I think. So take it away. Great. Thank you so much, Sarah. Um, let me just um, start out and I'm going to go ahead, folks, and share my screen with you and then move things into slideshow mode. If somebody can verify to me that you are seeing a slide, we're good to go. Okay. And not my email <laughs> or something silly like that. So I'm going to start out. Um, this is how to Contact us if you're curious to talk to any of us. And Carrie, you were kind of the one that got us organized. So do you want to say anything before I just give a general overview? Of yeah, course. so I, my my initial idea uh, when, you know, when I proposed this slither was like, you know, that a lot of people don't really know what Kerr does and they don't really, I mean, they know that we're out there, but they don't really know like, how they can use it or how they can uh, get resources. And, and so I thought this would be a great um, uh, webinar to, for people that, you know, wanted a little bit of information about, you know, what it is we do. And so, so this is us. So we are, um, uh, so I'm Carrie Stone. I'm from the Department of Chemistry at Lewis University. Um, and we have uh, Bridget Gorley, who's in the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry at DePaul University, and Joe Retzik, who's in the Department of Chemistry at Denison University. Could you Great. go to the next slide? Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, sure. All right, and so I, um, and so what I did was I took all the of uh, all of the uh, division members. So I'm talking specifically about the div division of chemistry. And I sort of plotted where they are. And I was actually kind of uh, surprised. We have uh, a lot of people in the, in, New, in New England, a little bit scattered in the Midwest. And then we there's a huge block of the United States that we don't cover um, until you get out to California and Texas. So um, I, I thought, oh, we might need some people from, from the West. <laughs> so um, that was just... Uh, my own interest. So this is where we're located. Um, can you go to the next slide? And this is who we are. There, there are many of us and we have Joe with us, who is our division chair. Um, and, uh, and we have Sarah here, who is a new member of CUR. And then um, I am actually, a, it's my second year as a division representative. Um, I originally got into, um, or was interested in running because of my interest in course-based undergraduate research experiences. I've been doing these for, for a while now, and I was I wanted to get into a group with that were like-minded folks. All right, next slide. All right, and so I sort of jotted down um, how people can um, get involved. And so, and I say, well, you know, getting involved can vary, you know, the levels of inv involvement can vary. You could be a division representative that's an elected position, or you could just lurk on the website. I didn't know how else to say that. <laughs> uh, so you're just browsing the internet on, on the Council of Undergraduate Research. That's just fine because we have lots of resources up on the website. Um, and so reasons you might want to get involved. Well, I mean, for me, it was I was passionate about undergraduate research, and that's why I, I got involved. Um, you also might want to find some res resources that to support undergraduate research. Um, you might want to learn what people do uh, when they're building their research um, or thinking about adding research to your courses and uh, or, you know, have it be lecture or lab. Um, and maybe you're just starting out and you're building your own lab with undergraduates. Uh, maybe you met someone at a conference. So this is all uh, ways that you maybe you want to get involved, maybe you have some general interest in undergraduate research, who knows. Um, but yeah, so all the way from being an elected position, all the way to just, you know, just browsing the website. So um, 
I might take over at this point of the three of us both. Um, I have been a Kerr or a, I guess really I should say of the four of us, I have been on the council the longest. And so I am often going to say Kerr counselor because we've changed to division representatives and I'm been around so long, you know, I'm slow to pick up the new lingo a little bit. But so I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of Kerr and how it's structured. And then Joe's going to come in and share a lot more specifics about the division and ways to get involved as chemists. Just to give you a little context, I happen to be a physical chemist at a four-year, um, if you're not familiar with DePa, we're four-year private liberal arts and we're centrally located, we joke, an hour from everywhere in central Indiana. So anyway, Kerr's mission is to support and promote high quality undergraduate research. And I would say in chemistry, that is almost always faculty or perhaps if they're at a national lab, perhaps it's not necessarily a faculty member, but it's a mentored research experience. But we're trying to be all inclusive. And so we also mention research scholarship and creative inquiry, because as you can see here on this slide, Kerr is organized into 13 divisions, 11 of which are disciplinary, and then two of which we've chosen to sort of phrase here as multidisciplinary. But what you might think about undergraduate research program directors are really a group of like-minded individuals in those large institutions, largely, although not exclusively, in the larger institutions why there might be a separate office of undergraduate research. Um, and so this is a really great professional organization for them. But the at-large multidisciplinary kind of is that catch-all. It also houses a lot of our senior administration who really care deeply but don't necessarily feel like their best location is to be housed in their scholarly discipline since they're now they have a more broad institutional role. But you can see the groupings there. If you don't know a lot about the history of Kerr, it got started in the with a group of chemists, very quickly moved to the sciences, and now has really broadened and recognized that scholarly and creative inquiry in all disciplines. And that's a really important hallmark and also moved from just small schools to larger schools. So Kerr's got a lot of resources that have been developed and Carrie mentioned going to the website, which we're gonna talk a little bit more about here um, in Joe's pieces. And Joe, I think is actually gonna give us some tours and highlights of, of several key places to find things. But recognizing that Kerr offers a variety of um, meetings, for example, there are national conferences for faculty and staff supporting the undergraduate research enterprise. They have from time to time had REU funding to support a symposium with REU and that kind of ebbs and flows depending on where we are with our NSF funding for that. The another big thing where your students might present is the National Conference on Undergraduate Research. I forgot to update this slide here. We've got posters on the Hill, which used to be a student presentation, which has just been changed to a new program, um, tra Scholars Transforming Through Research, um, STR. Kerr Dialogues is about dialoguing with the funding agencies. And so that's a really great opportunity to learn what's coming down the pike with regard to funding agencies as you're looking for funding and getting strategies for finding funding for your work with students. There's also a lot of institutes and workshops getting started in undergraduate research, supporting undergraduate research in the arts and sciences, the grant writing, proposal writing workshop, things like that. Kerr offers consulting services, so you need to do a program review and you'd like to have somebody come um, visit your program that has an eye for undergraduate research. We've got mentor networks if you're a new faculty member and perhaps you're looking for a mentor because you're the only physical chemist on staff where you are. Um we can also, people that will, if you get your grant written far enough in advance, provide you some feedback that of people that have been highly successful at getting it funding. Um, there are a number of awards where we recognize individuals. There's a discussion forum that Joe's going to talk a little bit more about. Kerr does a lot of advocacy at the federal level to try to help 
do that. And we have some publications in particular, if you're looking for a venue on where to um, publish work that you've done about the enterprise, research about the enterprise and practice of undergraduate research, um, the scholarship and practice of undergraduate research might be a place for that. Um, we have a how-to series, and it looks like this um, slide, things moved a little on me. I do apologize. Um, but the how-to series, how to get started in research, how to find funding, core is characteristics of excellence. And we have published a number of specialized volumes throughout the years um, in terms of things like having inclusive practices in undergraduate research and others. Um, so we're a community, the Kerr community. You can sign up and participate in the Kerr community online. It's a discussion forum and a lot of um, chain, exchange of ideas, content creation, idea incubation, great way to get like-minded colleagues. We do a lot of mentoring, as I mentioned. Um, you can look at Kerr's 20. 20 through 2025 strategic plan and look at the main fo focuses, attend a conference. Many of you may be already able to join for free if your institution is an enhanced institutional member and have full access to CUR resources. Um, so that's something to join or to, to join if your institution is just a institutional member or perhaps not a member. So we encourage you to take a look at that. Um, I've talked a lot about the programs. You get a network. You get really this network of people really passionate about undergraduate research and a place to showcase what you're doing, learn from others. Really, I've got to say through my career in higher education, career has, CUR has been wonderful in creating connections to the larger issues in higher education. Um, as a member, you get discounts on a variety of the resources and professional development opportunities. For me, it's been a wonderful lifeline, really appreciate. Um, and that's why I keep staying on um, as a division representative to help create some of that content and benefit for others. Um, for students, I mentioned the scholars transforming through research. A lot of the student things, things get launched in the fall for the year and then move into the spring. And so this is a six month program where students are working as a team on their campus with a faculty member and then coming together from these different places around the globe via Zoom to then really advocate for strengthening undergraduate research on their own campus. They have an opportunity to present at the National Conference on Undergraduate Research, and the submissions are open now, and the conference is held in March or April every year, just depending on the year, and they're held typically on a campus, um, and so therefore that gives you, and there have been virtual options for attendance and participation in more recent years with COVID and things like that, so it's a great forum for students to get to share and be part of a conference, particularly in those fields where it may be less typical for students to present, or perhaps you don't have the funds to get your student to a national conference in your in chemistry, um, or you feel like that student is not quite ready for that, but they need another experience um, to get them ready um, down the road. So that's a great opportunity for lots of students. For a lo lot of us in chemistry, the CURS big thing, the workshops, the conferences, gr supporting grant, successful grants, learning about grants, the advocacy that happens to help funding agencies understand the valuable research that is done by and with undergraduates, um, program review, assessment of undergraduate research ideas and hard data that you can use to make cases for your institutions um, as you try to position undergraduate research to be a, a really strong thing on your own campus. Um, I mentioned before the Proposal Writing Institute, that's a great place to go to a like three-day boot camp and really flesh out your grant and get a lot of feedback from the workshop organizers to really help you strengthen your proposal. Um, 
we've had beginning a research program in the national sciences or creative inquiry in arts and humanities. Um, just a good thing to watch and see because new things are developed uh, all the time. Curd Dialogues is annual and it comes in February. And Connect UR is now an annual event. And there is both a virtual, you can sign up virtually to attend that part. You can sign up and come to the in-person part, or you can do all, do both. Um, and that is a really great space where people have come together um, to learn from one another, learn what's going on in undergraduate research, um, and make connections. Uh, here, I did a quick snapshot of the Kerr website, but as I say, as we transition to some things here in just a moment about the chemistry division, um, in particular, I know Joe is going to take you to the website and show you around. So this is just a screen capture. And you can see my reminder that um, in one of my roles there that I got, uh, that I'm supposed to be talking with facility about some labs um, in support of my colleagues in psychology. So apologize for that over the corner of that there. I didn't catch that I did that. <laughs> um, so with that, I'm going to I'm the next slide. Um, really, I'm going to let Joe take you through things specific to chemistry. So I am going to stop my screen share here and he, he's going to pick up that same slide and yeah. take it away. Yes. Thank you very much. Um, Bridget. Do, do you guys now? I tried to do that. Do you see the slide again? Um, and I, I see that there's a little bit of cutoff from the um, from Zoom on there. But do you guys see that? And so, uh, first of all, thank you so much um, to um, for Sarah and Perry for in, in inviting and hosting this slither on this topic. I'm Joe Rizek. I'm currently the, the chair of the chemistry division, um, and I'm kind of in a, in a nice in-between position. Uh, I've been a counselor for around um, nine years uh, now, so uh, I've, I kind of came in a, around a decade ago and, and have been thrilled, and, and I think this is one been a place for me to really uh, learn um, from my colleagues who have different perspectives, um, connect, you know, to individuals uh, that, you know, have shared ideas or shared challenges. Um, and then also to start thinking about how do I empower others who, you know, uh, who move along. So as I transition personally to, to you know, the second half of my career, I suppose, I, I really value Kerr for what it allows um, me to do in terms of, you um, have a, a venue to work with, communicate, mentor um, other colleagues across the country. Um, and, and I think that it, it really is a valuable organization, especially the chemistry division, for both helping um, our community get started. So uh, as I said here, we as a division really focus on facilitating and supporting high quality mentored research in the chemical sciences. Um, I put our website, the main website is per.org. We'll go there in a second. Our division, as Bridget mentioned, really does focus significantly on the faculty part of that. That is, we want to support the faculty who are enabling the research opportunities and engagement. Um, that is a, a, one of the uh, kind of focuses of the chemistry division. Other divisions um, do that as well as have some other more um, primary focuses on the students themselves, depending on how research works um, in those divisions. But for us, um, largely, not exclusively, certainly, but largely, um, students aren't engaging in in real undergraduate research unless there's some professional mentor there with them, uh, you know, because uh, gosh, gosh knows what they do. Um, I, I do want to point out that right now this this absolutely um, includes both kind of a traditional mentored research model, like the apprenticeship model, uh, as well as a heavy focus on the course under rigid, under course based undergraduate research. Uh, exploration, development, and opportunities. Um, as you know, Carrie mentioned is one of the reasons she's gotten involved. And in fact, I'm excited for her passion and leadership in that area as, as our division continues to develop more resources and kind of opportunities and connections around, around cures in, in development. Uh, and in particular, I'd say in addition to the research, carrying it out with students, either in your own research lab or in a classroom slash lab experience, we also do look at program development, sustaining programs, administrating programs, and assessing programs. Um, you know, as, as we kind of noted, uh, we have a program uh, director division, but 
many of those directors or officers come from larger institutions and on the Kerr division itself, we traditionally do have people who have served at smaller institutions in the director of undergraduate research role or, or the sponsored research officer role, um, because, you know, they really identify with the discipline, but also serve that role at their smaller institution. And so we, we do think about that overall um, in terms of what, what we do. Um, so who are we? Uh, first of all, we have reinstated a, a, a newsletter, um, and I want to give a, a shout out to Sarah, who's here. She was a huge part of, of getting that up and running. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing this quickly and go to the website. So this is cur.org, the main website. Um, and what you can see here, um, if you go to uh, membership and community divisions, uh, you can explore this on your own time. I'm going to do it quickly. Um, and then in divisions, there we are, chemistry. And under chemistry, there's a great link to our newsletter um, that should be mentorship. Oh, we have a mentorship award. We have a podcast, a blog that's coming up in just a second. And up oh, there we are, newsletter. So I really, really hope um, that you take time to kind of peruse this newsletter. Um, and in fact, I'll show you the PDF version because I think it looks nicer. Uh, that's it. Um, there's an introduction by me, a kind of laying out what I think are some context for kind of the, our community and undergraduate research right now, but by no means is this inclusive or are all encompassing. Also some highlights around people who are doing good work in our in our area, as well as a list of opportunities and other things. So please, please do check this out. We currently hope to put this out kind of triannually. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Um, I then I do want to highlight um, that what you'll find in that newsletter are other ways we are trying to engage with our community. So we have a, a, a podcast, uh, of which Bridget has been one of the kind of main drivers of. And, and I know also that um, that uh, our, I think Carrie, you've, you've done one and Sarah, I saw you did one as well, right? Or I know Sarah did, yeah. Um, this is a great opportunity so you can listen. And if you have an idea, if you're like, hey, I'd really like to um, you know have, have a podcast about this aspect of undergraduate research, you know, it could be just about anything. Um, from what you do in the lab to how you facilitate engagement to inclusive environments, um, we would love to hear from you. We are always looking for new contributors and new members. And again, if you go um, to our divisional page, you will see a link to this um, podcast right here. Um, so division podcast, and it, it's right on, it's available on um, Spotify. Um, and it's chem for real is if you're searching for it. Um, it's really got a lot of great content that we've built up over the past couple of years. Speaking of great content, we also have a blog page that has been now around for over a decade. Um, and this blog page, again, you can link right here. I think you'll see uh, this one's by you, isn't it, Sarah? Yeah, this is a uh, link to Sarah's podcast right here. But we have now uh, uh, about... 70 to 80 different blog posts over the past few years on a range of different topics. Um, you can search topics, for instance, if you're interested in grants, uh, you can search grant and see several different things from how to find small grants, uh, you know, then put those together. Or Bridget was a, a, a resource for that to um, opportunities and experience in NIH, NSF. How do you, what do you do when you get rejected? Because um, it happens to all of us, if, if not most of us. Uh, and it never feels good, but you're in good company. Um, there's a lot of great resources here. And I guess I kind of want to use that to say, you know, one of the reasons that, I, again, that I want to, to expand our engagement with our community is that we do, do all get rejected, be it in a grant or a paper or maybe in a review. or And we, we often don't have in our own institutions you know, the, the direct disciplinary perspective that can really help us get over the hump in our PCHEM, teaching of PCHEM or engaging in research in organic chemistry. The community of undergraduate researchers is really what um, current chemistry is all about. Um, and we want to build that so we have a communities page. Um, we are gonna start inspired by uh, you, the, the Viper community. We are gonna start a um, Discord channel. Stay tuned for that. Um, and really try and get in touch. But what I would say to all of you out there um, is uh, that I'll skip ahead to this here. Please do get in touch with us. We have an email for the division itself. We'd love to hear from you that way. 
or um, you could contact me or the other members directly as, as you see fit. Um, going back, sorry, I'm a little out of order, um, but I wanna say um, to formally get involved as a volunteer to get elected, there are two ways to do this. So as Bridget laid out, we have division representatives and that name representative is new as of this year. And we, for 30 some years, were division counselors. So that's changed. Um, what makes it difficult is there now are still counselors. They're just something else. So it's a bit confusing, but division representatives, that's the four of us are representatives. It is 24 positions. Eight more or less are elected every year on a three year cycle. Okay. That election is now open. Okay. What we do is we do the work of connecting to the community and helping actually engage and facilitate research in our disciplines of, of every type. Um, we focus on developing resources, mentoring, networking, the facilitating of networking, advocacy, and other. Um, we do that through um, the resources and the that I've highlighted. And um, we also are going to be at, and we're always at the ACS meetings. We'll have a formal kind of get together that I think Terry is actually planning uh, or, or, or will be planning at New Orleans ACS meeting. And we would love to see everyone in our community, whether you are a representative, a member or not, um, engage with us there. That is why we are there. I will show you how to connect to the, um, the division. So if you go to the main page, it's in about, it's not easy to find, leadership. And then if you go down here to nominations and elections, you will see here that we are open for nomination uh, of division representatives here. And so this is actually how you do it. You can self-nominate, or it may be better to email me or one of us and say, hey, I'm interested. How should I go about doing that? I'd be glad to kind of give you tips and tricks of what to provide in that nomination. Um, and we'd love to have a really um, robust plate of nominees to help us do the good work that we do. The second way um, that you can be elected is in now this counselor position. This is a, a new position as of this year. And this now is uh, kind of an intermediate group between the divisions that do the work of our disciplines and then the, the organization itself that occur as an organization and its board of directors. So as the organization has grown to encompass far more divisions and more people, um, we have found it really useful to have divisions focus on disciplinary work and then a board of directors that focuses on the overarching pillars and, and goals of the organization itself, as well as its operations. Um, so again, there are two counselors that will represent our division, um, and they are to be selected first the first time this year. So there is a one-year position and a three-year position open. It'll be three year terms from then as we stagger this. And I will say that as a division, we have decided that we really value, um, sorry for the typos, but experience as a division representative um, before doing this. So, but if anyone is viewing this and has served as a representative or is currently serving and would be interested in moving more into the organizational side and facilitating communication to the board of directors, this is the position for you. Um, the nominations timeline is exactly the same as representative. You can run for both a, the new counselor and a representative um, if you'd like. So that way, if you don't get elected to a counselor, but still want to be a representative um, or vice versa, that is available to you. Um, with that, I, I just kind of want to say um, thank you. If, if you're here listening to this, thank you uh, again to um, Terry and Sarah for making it happen and Bridget for um, for helping present this information. Look at our um, blogs, listen to our podcasts, check out our newsletter, keep an eye open for surveys as we try to understand you and what you won't think we should be focusing on moving forward. Uh, and we would love to hear from you. Uh, and that's all I have. Thank you very much. Well, thank you to all three of you. Um, I don't know if anyone else has any other closing remarks. I think this will be really good to get more people involved and reaching out through the Viper community, I think will be really, really useful. I know I learned some stuff during this presentation. Um, and I think it was a good point that you might already be a member and you can look on the website to see if your school already like ensures you membership. So I think that'll be a good thing for people to check out. So anyone else have any last parting words? Let me just share with that. Um, you can look up if your institution is an enhanced institutional member. You still have to sign up and say, I want to be a member 
It doesn't cost you anything to do that. But Kerr has gone back and forth through whether we should have the institution just automatically upload sort of everyone. And we decided that we wanted people to make a choice that they wanted to get that information from Kerr. Um, and so it, that's why you still have to take that step. But if your institution is an enhanced institutional member, um, if your institution is not, I would encourage you to maybe nudge, you will be able to see who, if your institution is just a member, you'll be able to see who the administrator who's paying for that is and nudge them to say, hey, this would really be value added if we had the enhanced membership because all our faculty could get these great resources and get connected to this great community. Um, but we would love to see you join the discussion, the um, Kerr community, the online discussion community. You can set that email to get it as a daily, weekly. You don't have to get binged all day. I know um, a lot of us probably have email fatigue and need to get it sort of in a more measurable chunk. So there are a lot of ways and there's a lot of things within the community. If you have a particular interest in, if your interest in is diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, there's a subgroup there. If your interest is the um, cures, there's subgroup there. You know, if your interest is more on the governance side of things, whatever it happens to be. So I just might include those tidbits and really Reach out to any of us. We're obviously very passionate about Kerr. We'd love to hear from you and have that conversation and answer a specific question. Um, you know, I'm always happy to do it asynchronously via email or personally happy to set up a time and jump on the phone or a Zoom. Perfect. Great. All right. Well, thank you all for, for telling us more about uh, Kerr and Kerr chemistry. And hopefully we'll make some new connections and It'll be a it'll be a good thing. Um, so thanks so much.